Welcome back to Felicity Was Here. I'm Heather. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dr. Joe. And today we're discussing Felicity Season 1, Episode 16, The Fugue. Hey, ladies, I can't believe this is our 16th episode. The number just keeps going up and up. So awesome. Although the title of this episode shouldn't be The Fugue. It should be What the Fuck Was Noel Thinking? (laughs) No, with a fugue, was he thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these, this set of three, last week, this week, and next week, they're not Noel's best. Yeah. He's pretty horrendous in this episode, poor yeah. guy. But, I'm yeah. bracing myself. I've, I've, I know what I'm going to be on the receiving end of this week. So, and next week, to be honest, but it's all right. I still, despite Noel on the receiving end of that yeah yeah yeah. not you despite the Felicity and Noel drama I still just love this episode because of the drama it's so Mm -hmm. juicy I still enjoy watching it for some reason there's some yeah there's a lot of good juicy stuff here yeah very emotional too so let's catch up on last week where Felicity was going to enter into a green card marriage with Javier but he ended up going back to Spain with his partner Samuel Meanwhile, Ben tried out for the swim team, and he made it. And we also met Noel's brother, Ryan, who came out to Noel. This week, however, Noel is confused when Hannah reappears. And also, Julie doesn't think that Ben's swim team friends like her very much. So this week, we open up at Dean and DeLuca, where Felicity's in a team meeting with their new manager, Abby, who has taken over while Javier is gone. And in the middle of this team meeting, who shows up but... Hannah, her name is Hannah, Hannah, who's looking for a phone. And I mean, Felicity's shocked. We're all shocked. Why is Hannah here? Well, apparently she moved to New York and is going to the conservatory that she had been accepted into when over Thanksgiving, she was discussing with Noel whether or not she should move there. Well, she moved there, but Noel doesn't know. And I will say, honestly, good for her. Like, you got into this really fancy music school. Like, go to the conservatory, even if you break up with your boyfriend. Who cares? Sure. But, you know, Felicity mentions later in the episode, but it was very strange that she just happened to walk into her oh. coffee shop. Yes. Uh-huh. The city is so huge, and you just happen to go to this Dean and DeLuca. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Yep. Well, in a big city, you want to see a familiar face, right? <laughs> Well, she acted like she didn't know she worked there. She's like, what? Yeah, that's you? That's like Felicity. Oh, I totally forgot yeah. you go here. <laughs> Bitch knew she worked there. Bitch oh, knew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way she said it, she was kind of was kind of condescending. She was like, you work here. Like, what? You work here? Like, I don't mm. know. It was a little like, oh, you work here. This little coffee place. You cute yeah. little thing. <laughs> I'm like, you're the same age. How adorable <laughs> for you. I love that yeah. for you. So Hannah asks Felicity how Noel is doing, and Felicity says, he's doing great. We're doing great. Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, you got to throw that in there because you're together. You got to let her know right away. Stake your claim. I like that. (laughs) We are doing great. So then at Noel's room, Felicity drops by. She actually knocks, which I think is funny because, like, no one ever knocks on his door. Mm -hmm. They always just barge in. But, yeah, she goes in the room, and Noel's on the phone with Hannah herself and toward the end of the call he says great we'll see you tonight which ugh. and so Noel gets off the phone he tells Felicity that his ex who he hasn't seen since Thanksgiving secretly moved to New York City and has been living five minutes away from him and I'm just like well is it really a secret like she doesn't need to tell you anything like you're not together anymore so it's not like oh she's keeping a secret from she just doesn't have to tell him anything like they're not involved anymore so I thought that was weird too like it's a secret from him no she's just living her life yeah but I did think it was kind of strange that she didn't mention it at all like come on like they were together for two years I don't know it seemed odd to me it's weird yeah because if everything was so cool they could have been like I don't know just acknowledge each other's existence in the same zip code. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's too strange yeah. to expect if somebody was around to be like, oh, hey, I live here. Mm-hmm. Okay, go live your life. But she doesn't owe him an explanation. And it's crazy that if they were five minutes away, sure, yeah. But also if they live like five minutes away from each other, it is yeah. kind of strange that they haven't yeah. run into each other yet. That's because she never goes to the mailboxes. Yeah, she doesn't go to their school. <laughs> that's where everybody, or Epstein Bar, mm. <laughs> they would have seen each other 24-7 if she was at the mailboxes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So Felicity is annoyed because she's didn't think that Hannah would actually 
go tonight when she accidentally invited her to this group hang thing because Felicity's trying to prove to Hannah that her being here didn't bother her. And Noel asks, do you have a problem with her being here? And then Felicity in this episode, all she does is answer questions with more questions. (laughs) (laughs) So she says, should I? He says, do you? She says, should I? So it's like, do you? Well, should I? Do you? Well, should I? So yeah, she's like, should I? You're acting weird. And he was giving off a little bit of that Mm -hmm. like hyperactive beat allergy energy (laughs) she is also being slippery by asking answering questions with more questions just like own whatever is coming up just own it claim it it's getting a little annoying like well should i do you should i just answer yeah there is no should or should not it's just what is it Mm -hmm. be authentic (laughs) yeah so noel says well i don't know i mean you me and her all in the same city isn't it weird well, he says, is it weird? <laughs> Again, uh, <laughs> answering with another question. And Noel, sa- and Noel says, no. And I will admit, I know he's not great in this episode, but he does look really hot in that scene specifically. I don't know why, but I was like staring at his hazel eyes and that like brownish plaid shirt. He looked really yeah. cute. They wanted to make him look good before his downfall. <laughs> yeah, before the trench comes back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. One last look before you exactly. hate him. <laughs> So then in the cafeteria, Elena and Felicity are together and and Elena's, you know, they're talking about homework and Elena says that she will hand in Felicity's homework since Felicity's got to go keep an eye on her man tonight when they all get together with Hannah. And then Elena says like, oh, I'd like to keep an eye on him. And she gestures to the hot art student, Eli. He's back. And Felicity says, oh, I know him. Like, I met him at the art studio. And so he starts coming over. And Elena says, you better introduce me. (laughs) And so Eli comes over and starts chatting. Felicity does introduce Elena. But he's got his eye on Felicity. Like, he's not looking at Elena, right? So he tells Felicity that she left some of her sketches in the studio. So he put them in his drawer if she wants to go get them. Uh Uh-huh. Sure. He sure she left drawer. some sketches <laughs> he was basically undressing her with his eyes in this entire scene like i forgot what's the name of this actor simon Rex. Me. simon he is really good at just portraying that like i want to bang you look mm-hmm. just with his damn eyes mm-hmm. so uh yeah the sketches are waiting for her and after eli leaves elena says damn you better go get those sketches <laughs> and yeah hard agree and also, I missed Elena. And she's still in this episode, not enough of her at all. Yeah. She's barely in it, but I missed her in the last couple episodes. Then we go to the loft where Julie is playing her guitar. And I was trying to remember if we have really discussed this much on our show yet. But some fun facts about mm-hmm. Julie and Amy Jo Johnson. Originally, the character Julie was going to be a dancer, a dance major. But when JJ and Matt Rees and all the writers, when they found out that Amy Jo Johnson could actually sing and play guitar, they changed Julie's character to be a musician instead. And the song that she is playing in this scene and in the episode is called Puddle of Grace. And it's actually Amy Jo Johnson's own song that she wrote. And a little bit of additional background at the time when she got the pilot and started filming season one her mom actually got sick and passed away so I think some of the song lyrics kind of mean a little bit more because she I think references her mom in the song too so it just kind of adds a little bit more to the pretty and sad (laughs) nature of the song Mm -hmm. and also it just made me think that must have been really difficult for her to play Julie's storyline with having such a big focus on her birth mom throughout the season that must have been really hard for the actress so just thought that was I've been thinking about it this entire time yeah I knew that and I was surprised we hadn't talked about it but I never brought it up but I think about it every episode she's in I'm like I can't believe this that must have been awful yeah so yeah, she's playing this beautiful song. Sean is in the kitchen listening to her and, you know, she's writing down some notes <clears throat> as she's playing. And he says that, you know, he really likes the song. He says it's pretty and sad, sad and pretty. And she's like, yeah, it's kind of what I was going for. So that was really sweet. And then Ben bursts in with Lynn and all of his new swim buddies. And they're like grabbing beverages and talking and loud. 
being college guys, right? <laughs> They're not doing anything like really crazy offensive. They're just, you know, a loud, boisterous group. But Lynn comes in and grabs Julie's guitar and like starts playing with it. And he's like mansplaining guitars to her like, oh, is this a Wilson? She's like, no, nope, I don't think so. It doesn't say Wilson on it. And then says that she's out of tune. And so he starts tweaking with the strings and she's like, nope, that was my own tuning. So she's kind of annoyed. She gets up, starts packing things. And Ben can kind of see that Julie's annoyed. And so he goes over to her and says, like, him and all of his buddies can go. But she's like, nah, I'm going to go, you know, class, homework, whatever. So we can start to see a little bit of annoyance here from Julie. Two things. One, Heather, back up, because it was a Martin, not a Wilson. Oh, and I don't want to get I don't know gu- on the I don't, freaking... I don't know guitars. <laughs> I'm not getting one star for that. <laughs> also... Also, was Sean talking about the song or was he talking about Julie? I mean, oh, probably both. both. Yeah, mm-hmm. both. Totally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Getting some vibes. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can cut the Wilson part out entirely. Just beep the correct name, she'll just say. <laughs> Martin. That's going to get regenerated. Martin. <laughs> yeah. Martin. going to get overdubbed. <laughs> Um. (laughs) so then at the bar noel felicity julie and hannah are all having dinner together and actually ben's there too he's just off playing darts to the side and hannah is telling this riveting story about being on the wrong subway and trying to find this store and it didn't actually exist I mean, it's, yeah, awkward conversation, in my opinion. There's some awkward moments with Felicity, too, and Noel chiming in and correcting her about what subway line it is. So it felt a little competitive, and there was some weirdness weirdness there. And then Hannah does the whole, oh, well, remember the time when me and you, Noel, we went to this blah, 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 and she's trying to do the whole, I've known you longer, and we have all of these inside memories that no one else can talk about, right? And she even reaches out and touches his arm right in front of Felicity. And I almost gasped. I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. damn, right in front of Felicity. Like, that was bold. She's she's not playing. Mm -mm. She's playing to win is what she's doing. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Then Lynn brings some more drinks over and Julie asks him where Ben is. And so she goes over to the dartboard. And then Felicity also excuses herself from the table. So Julie goes over to see Ben, and he's playing darts. She's like, come back to the table, but Ben needs a few minutes. And meanwhile, Felicity's over at the bar spying, as she says, blatantly spying. And Julie sees her, goes up, and she's like, what, are you worried about Hannah? And Felicity tells her, well, apparently things didn't work out with that guy in Chicago. And she's like, please, she knew I worked at Dean and DeLuca. Javier was at the Thanksgiving dinner. She's like, is this really a coincidence that she happens to walk in at that coffee shop? And she says, I think she was scoping things out. And as she's about to go off on this tangent, (laughs) Felicity's like, oh, God, sorry. I'm being so judgmental. And Julie says, nah, you're just being a girlfriend. And Felicity says, is that what this is? And I'm like, oh, this is all so new to her. It's very <laughs> cute. But yeah, agree. She, it was not a coincidence that she went into Dean and DeLuca. So then we go back to the table where Hannah and Noel are alone together. And Hannah is ready to leave. She's got to go practice her piano. And Noel, Noel says that he will walk her out, which I thought was a little overboard. Like, she's a big girl. She can go outside on her own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but... Yeah, he walks her out and as, you know, he's kind of hailing a cab for her, she says that she's working on a fugue, which is where two themes are repeated, which is interesting. Mm. Like, I see you writers. I get the metaphor here. Going back and forth. Which girl? Hmm? Which girl is it going to be? Smart. Uh, So she also wants Noel to listen to what she has so far on her fugue and she hands him a cassette tape (laughs) And he, yeah, she wants him to let her know his thoughts like he used to. And yeah, I, now I'm annoyed, super annoyed with Hannah. I'm like, back off. He's yeah. not your man anymore. He can't do things like he used to. You're not together. But Noel says, sure. I'm sorry. Does Noel have like musical experience that he is like, would it be able to help someone who got into a conservatory? Like, what? This is dumb. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's a graphics oh, He's obviously person. her muse. <laughs> you can help her with Photoshop, but not with yeah. music. Yeah. <laughs> can Photoshop That's a really her great observation. album cover or whatever. Yeah. yeah, there you go. But yeah, I thought that was dumb. Good point. And you know what else is dumb? As Hannah gets into the cab, 
she thanks mm-hmm. Noel and then pulls his face in for a kiss. And mm-hmm. then they, as they pull away, they both just kind of look dumbfounded at each other. And yeah, the cab pulls away. And I hate that. <laughs> I just hate that whole well, thing. Well, she didn't look dumbfounded. She was just like, she knew what she was doing. She's Afterward, though, she, I don't know, she like kind of sat back in the cab like, oh, shit, what did I just do? Nah, um, she was trying well, to read how he took it. Like, yeah. is this working? She knew exactly <laughs> what she was doing because she had planned that yep. from the beginning. <laughs> From the second she walked into Dean and Deluxe, yeah, she's very calculating. <laughs> she's evil, precisely. She's evil, yeah. Very calculating, and I think she was just waiting for his reaction. I confirm, haha, I've succeeded. Yeah, watch it again, Heather, because she totally just sits back and is like, "Yes, my plan is in motion." I don't know. She like looks down and looks very serious. I don't know. She doesn't look satisfied, in my opinion. But no, I mean, she's not because like... he wasn't yeah. enthusiastic enough, probably. Mm. So. I think she was probably just disappointed, like, ah, like, it's oh. not quite working all the way. Because yeah. yeah. she was laying it on pretty thick, like you said, like the inside stories mm-hmm. and the touching the arm and all that stuff. It's like, ooh, I've got him in my clutches. It was all a part yeah. of her plan. Yeah. So she's probably just a little disappointed that he didn't jump in the cab with her and just take <laughs> off. Mm-hmm. Like in When Harry Met Sally. I know you know what scene I'm talking about. It's been a while. I'm sorry. When um they set each other up with their best friends and then they're oh. like, oh, like, I'm not going to talk to him. I'll just give I thought you met time. Harry and Sally. I'm like, what? <laughs> yes. <No. laughs> when Harry Met Sally and the cab takes off, like one of the best scenes ever. Carrie Fisher and that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So then at Dean and DeLuca the next day, Felicity is working, gives Noel some coffee. She is blabbering on about McGrath. And then her manager, Abby, pulls her aside. You know, she tells Noel, like, oh, look at how she talks to me. But Noel's like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, I'm looking. But you can see he's got all of the Hannah stuff on his mind. So then Felicity goes to chat with Abby, who says, you know, it was, we really need to avoid social moments. It's something we need to be conscious of. Do you know what that word means? <laughs> Felicity says, what, conscious? And I just laughed so hard at that. She's like, what, conscious? Just the way she said it. Um, <laughs> I love Carrie Russell. She's like, yeah, I know what conscious means. So then Felicity goes back to Noel, is like, can you believe her? Can you? Did you see that? And Noel blurts out, Hannah kissed me. And again, Noel is like the best at terrible timing Mm -hmm. of to say things like i don't think this is the time to tell her while she's working unless he wanted to avoid some drama Mm. and he thought that telling her there would soften the blow like she couldn't have a whole meltdown about it because sometimes she has big reactions sometimes she's okay (laughs) (laughs) you're disgusting (laughs) (laughs) so yeah i guess even being in public can't prevent an outburst but Maybe in her place of business, she'd scale it back a little bit. Yeah. And she was, to, yeah, she did kind of scale it back. She just kind of quietly sits down and asks him why he didn't tell her last night. And he says, because it didn't mean anything. Like, I didn't kiss her back. And then Felicity replies, well, maybe it's because you're conflicted and you think telling me will squash those feelings. And so then she was like, you know, well, how long was the kiss? And we get another kiss reenactment, like with Blair and Tara, <laughs> where they like lean toward each yep. other, but don't actually kiss. I'm like, who's ever done this in real life? Like reenacted kisses. It's funny. <laughs> so yeah, he shows her without actually kissing her. And Felicity's like, oh, it's a pretty long kiss. And he's like, oh, no, it was shorter than that. So he's trying to, yeah, backtrack. But Noel says that he won't see her again. He's like, I mean, after the kiss, like, what am I supposed to do? She says, what, what do you want to do? Always answering with another question. And I think that's a fair question, I was question, just going to say, that's yeah. fair. Like, he needs to take ownership of that. But yes, it is repeating that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so then he says he wants to give the tape back and not see her again. We'll see. We'll see about that. So then at the loft, Julie's rushing out again. And it's like her and Ben are mid-fight. He's like, well, what are you talking about? She says, nothing. It's fine. And he's like, well, it's not fine, especially when you say, it's fine. And that was a funny Ben. Funny Ben (laughs) line. Julie says that she just doesn't think that his swim team friends like her very much. Ben's like, you're crazy. They like you. But Sean's listening. But he's like, I don't think they like her. (laughs) Ben's like, who asked you? Like, stay out of this. But they're, they're having a fight in the middle of the loft. So fair game. Which is interesting because it really feels a lot more like she doesn't like them. Absolutely. So it's interesting mm. that she's kind of obviously there's saying, oh, they don't yeah. like me. It's like, really? There's stuff maybe we haven't seen because they're talking about this conversation. We didn't get to see about the open mic night or whatever. But yeah, like that first scene where they yeah. come into the apartment, they were doing nothing wrong. They were just having fun. She pretty... doesn't pay rent. She doesn't actually she's live there. Out. Like, 
it's his place. He can have his friends over. Like, you're staying there all the time just sitting around playing your guitar. Like, come on. Yeah. She was super standoffish from the yeah. start. So that's an unfair characterization that they don't like her. Mm-hmm. That was a little bit off mm-hmm. base. Based on, yeah. Defense the, mechanism. What we saw. Based on what we but saw. But she further explains that Lynn mentioned that there was an open mic night at the bar. Julie said that might be something she'd be interested in. And Lynn ignored her, according to her. But Ben says, you're overreacting. Sean says, she isn't. (laughs) And again, Ben's pissed. He's like, why are you talking? This isn't about you. And Sean's like, well, out of the three of us who live here, like, none of us are paying rent. And Ben was like, oh, I'll I'll give you it. I told you I'd give you a check this week. So clearly there's still some money issues happening here. But Julie says, Ben, you're also acting different. You also didn't mention the open mic night to me and he's like oh I didn't oh I didn't you know didn't mean to do that whatever and then here's where I think it's really coming from she says it's just that I was it was like you and them and I was the girlfriend she's like I'm just not used to being the girlfriend when I'm around you so clearly there's some there dynamic that's changed like she feels like the third wheel or fifth she wheel doesn't or whatever like to share. or mm-hmm. yeah she hates that fifth wheel vibe or, yeah I remember when she flipped out about Felicity and Ben hanging out so there's something yep. something weird there I don't know also in Lynn's defense he's kind of a social knucklehead because <laughs> of that time he's like I know where you are from you didn't make the track team <laughs> so he's kind of not the best at social skills so yeah. I could see him being a little bit oblivious here and there if she's like oh I want to do this and he's like oh yeah, I mean, I just, just that just seems how Lynn is. He doesn't look like the smartest <laughs> or the brightest guy in the box. Yeah. No, <laughs> emotional intelligence isn't quite that high. I was just disappointed because Ben has been so there for Julie the last six months or whatever. It's always been just them. He's finally got something of his own and finally is like making friends outside of their little group. And she's like, I don't like it. Sucks. Like. Yeah, that's disappointing. Let him have his thing. Like, let him have let him some live. guy time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing. It's not just friends. It's like guy friends. I mean, he's not friends mm-hmm. with Noel. He's roommates with Sean. But are they really friends? Do they really hang out? Right? So this is like the first well, time. Sean's like 80 years older yeah, than Yeah, like this is the first time we're really <laughs> seeing Ben have male friends. Well, I guess mm-hmm. Zach might have been one. But that clearly was not a good friendship or mm-hmm. a lasting one. So yeah, like he's finally met some friends and all of 100% of his focus isn't on her and now she's pissy about it. It's yeah, kind of unfair. Mm-hmm. So Ben says, well, you should do the open mic night. So it's tomorrow night. And Julie says she wants Ben there for support because she'll be very nervous. So then Noel is in his room. It looks like he's putting Hannah's tape into an envelope to give back to her, but he's looking a little angsty about it. He goes over to her place and knocks on the door. Is this a bad time? No, come in. And I love that she's got like a real grown up apartment. She's not in the dorm like the rest of these fools. Of course she would. Even Noel, who's a sophomore, is in the, yeah, like even Noel's in the dorms, but she's so mature. She's got her own little studio apartment in the city. (laughs) She probably lives above the coffee shop where she goes downstairs to read the voice. I'm sure. Like, that's her. (laughs) She's so hoity toity. (laughs) Yep. And also, he did, he wanted to give her the tape back, but also not see her again. Well, like, well, you could have just mailed it back to her or mm-hmm. called her and said, like, hey, I can't do that. But he went in person to give the tape mm-hmm. back to her. Like, she can record another tape. Why do you have to hand the tape back to her? So, yeah, I think it was a little too convenient that he had to go back to the apartment to see her and give it back to her and tell her no. Like, he clearly just wanted to see her again. So that's awful. So, yeah, Noel tells her that he did some active sitting there, real thinking, and he cannot help her. And Hannah is embarrassed and says, oh, that kiss turned it everything in, you know, it's all so serious now. It was clearly a mistake. She said, though, it was the most natural thing she's done in months. She's like, oh, clearly shouldn't have done it. Like the most natural thing. Like, it's just so over the top (laughs) the way she's talking here. She's like, oh, it was just, it was me and you. It was New York at night. We always talked about living here together. And I've kissed you a thousand times. And I haven't seen you for months. And then she starts crying. She's like, oh, I haven't cried once since moving here. I'm like, okay, she's laying it on real thick here. Please. What I don't Mm. like about this is their breakup was like somewhat, it was pretty much mutual. Like they both at Thanksgiving were like, okay, we both don't feel the same anymore. We've both grown apart. 
but now all of a sudden three only three months later she's yeah, like oh, barely probably train get him back that was such a short amount of time after they had both decided this was what was best for them so this whole episode the forced drama of everything kind of made me mad like i don't i know they need the drama for him and felicity but it's like couldn't they have thought of another storyline i don't know I, no, I agree. I think it's way too soon to have this happen already. Mm. And even for Noel, like, he had the choice. Hannah gave him the yeah. choice of, like, I will move here. We can do this. And he was mm-hmm. like, no, we've grown apart. I don't have these feelings anymore. He was into Felicity. And, yeah, like, two months, three months later, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm confused because mm-hmm. she's here. It's like, well, she could have been here. You know, like, that's what yeah. she gave you the option for. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me that... He's been so obsessed with Felicity that to now, because she's here, all of a sudden he wants her. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I don't agree with the writers here. (laughs) Mm -mm. Although Julie had said, you don't want to be the rebound girl. And she kind of is now (laughs) in the context of all this this dynamics now. Because, yeah, he was barely, he had like one foot in that relationship and one foot out of the relationship. And then, then he and Felicity were together. So there wasn't a lot of downtime for him to get over the Hannah breakup he just went from one directly into another so it kind of makes sense a little bit that there's some lingering stuff that may have been there that was unresolved because it just happened so fast with him and Felicity Mm. and realistically like two years against a couple months like that's that's not wildly unreasonable that he'd still have some stuff lingering so then Hannah tells Noel that she basically flipped a coin that heads was New York turned out the guy in Chicago was not as fantastic as she thought he was and so yeah she flipped that coin she got heads and moved to New York and Noel says well we can't act like things were the same as before but then he says god you know I thought this whole time you were in Chicago with that guy and she says that she was here missing Noel so he says can't act like things are the same as before but I don't know that still doesn't sound like he's over it or just wants to be friends he just yeah he's very clearly Mm. confused doesn't know what to say so then felicity goes to the art studio to go pick up those sketches and it's the (laughs) art studio at night it is so dreamy in there (laughs) so beautiful (laughs) i know and the music in the background everything but like light piano Mm -hmm. yeah it's yes gorgeous delicious So she goes to Eli's drawer and starts looking through and Eli's there. So he comes up. He's in his little statement necklace again. He's looking (laughs) fine. (laughs) And so, yeah, she said she came to pick up the sketches. And so she takes them out and asks Eli how his piece was coming, the one with the old man. Eli says that he finished it and it's it's his grandfather. So they go over and look at it and they're talking about the art and she's analyzing it and So Eli's like, man, yeah, you're good at this stuff. And he's talking about her artwork, her sketches. So he says he'd love to talk to her about it sometime. And she's like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm really busy and I've got all this stuff going on, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, whatever, like whenever. (laughs) But he tells her, like, keep at it because you're really good at it. And I love that so much. Eli is so opposite of her and Noel and everyone. Like, he's the least problematic guy on the show so far. He's direct, but he's not pushy. Like, he's clearly said, like, I want to talk to you about this art. Let's go out. Or you come by, you know, come talk to me about these sketches. Like, he's direct, but he's not like, you are going to kiss me and we are going to have a magical kiss. And Like, he's not yeah. stalking her, right? And he encourages her to keep at her art again without being a weird stalker. So, yeah, I think we should have gotten more Eli on this show. Oh, my God. Because he's great. I would So much more. I would have loved it if he and Elena had dated for, I don't know, a whole season. Mm-hmm. That would have been great. Interesting. I could see that for her because he's not super mm-hmm. over the top. Like, they could just have their little sexy... Yeah, sexy interludes and then go do their own thing. Energy, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I guess Felicity's too busy to talk to him about art like an idiot. So as she's leaving, he's he's watching her leave. He's He doesn't want her to go, but he's excited to watch her leave. So he's into her. And then in Noel's room, we see that he's listening to Hannah's stupid tape and <laughs> going through old pictures of them together. Uh. And Felicity... That's too it much. Is. Yeah. The Felicity pictures. comes by. Come yeah. Yikes. 
she comes by to pick him up to go to Julie's open mic thing. And when she comes in, Noel quickly turns the tape off. So, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously he's hiding something now. (laughs) So Felicity's like, what's that? And yeah, Noel tells her that he went over. He's like, nothing happened, but we just talked. And Felicity says, first of all, I would never assume that something happened. And second of all, don't underestimate talking, which... I think that's fair (laughs) because that, yeah, yeah, you never know what they could have talked about. So, but Noel says that he's confused like every college guy. (laughs) So he tells her, don't make me feel guilty for going to see Hannah, but you kind of should feel guilty, Noel. That was a weird, weird ass thing to say. Like, don't make me feel, well, she's not making you feel, you just feel guilty because you should feel guilty. (laughs) Yeah. Especially because he just told her, no, I'm just going to tell her no. I'm going to give her their tape back. Like, what? Mm -hmm. And so Felicity's like, oh, sorry. Like, that's not what I'm trying to do. But now I just apologize for you seeing your ex who just kissed you. So now what, right? And she asks him, like, are you still in love with Hannah? And Noel says, of course, I still love Hannah. We went out a long time. But Felicity's like, no, not have feelings for Hannah or care about Hannah. But do you still love Hannah? And then Noel takes a little too long to say no, and it's also not a very convincing no. Mm-mm. That's the end of the scene there, which is mm-hmm. a... Good for her, yeah. though. She was very, at least in this scene, very direct and said, like, do you still feel this? Yeah. Like, do you feel this way? So I thought she did a great job. She was trying to be as direct as possible and not being slippery and elusive about anything. She tried. Mm-hmm. He didn't really deliver. No. So then back at Dean and DeLuca, both Felicity and Ben were working, but Ben is leaving and tells her that he'll see her tonight. But he can tell she looks upset. And so he asks her what's wrong. And she's like, no, you've got your swim practice. Go. He's like, no, it's all right. What's wrong? And she tells him that Noel's confused. Ben says, well, he's a guy like we're pretty much always confused. And Ben tells her that it'll work out. And Felicity says, well, how do you know that? He says, Noel would never choose to be with somebody else when he could be with you. Oh, so sweet. Oh my gosh, Ben. And I know that's your reaction. (laughs) Mine is, okay, but Ben, you chose someone else when you could have been with Felicity. So to me, that statement loses a little credibility because I'd be like, okay, but you didn't want me either. So (laughs) it could have been, you know. (laughs) He specifically was saying Noel wouldn't do that, though. Not like, oh, any guy would be oh, crazy not to choose Noel. you. Like, like Noel specifically <laughs> because of the way that they had interacted, I guess. I could see him making that assessment accurately. Yeah. Or reasonably. Yeah. So then at the bar, it's open mic night, and Lynn is introducing open mic performers. And we get a very 90s, like, beatnik spoken word guy that cracks me up. <laughs> and the whole open mic setup is so what I expected college to be like like oh yeah we're all just Mm -hmm. sitting around and everyone's you know tapping on their bongos and doing spoken word and that's like (laughs) that's exactly what I thought college was gonna be like and it was not (laughs) no but off to the side Julie's getting ready trying to tune her guitar and Lynn comes up to her is like are you ready for some Lilith Fair lullabies McLaughlin melodies DeFranco and yeah I'm like those are all so very 90s like Lilith Fair what a what a time to be alive I wish I had gone um same yeah I think they brought it back a few years ago no I feel like they had a little like reunion Lilith Fair tour but yeah, he's listing off all these amazing 90s song stresses, and Julie's like, Lynn, lay off right now. She's like trying to tune her guitar. It's not working. And she says that Ben's not here yet, so she's just really nervous and out of tune. So Lynn's like, hey, give me a shot. And sure enough, he's able to tune her guitar, and he says he's got perfect pitch, even though he can't play. He's like, oh, I guess that's like the fourth thing that I do better than anyone else. <laughs> but yeah, so again, I don't, we're not seeing this whole like Lynn doesn't like her or the friends don't like her thing like he was perfectly nice to her and helped tune her guitar so yeah I don't I feel like Julie it's all kind of in her head or she's creating this or making this insecurity of hers bigger than it needed to be then Lynn says are you ready now just remember no fear he's like I mean look at this guy and (laughs) the beatnik spoken word guy's like why 2k why not 2k (laughs) He just, yeah. I love that. That was classic. (laughs) That was perfect. Oh my God. (laughs) So clever. What a poetic genius. So then back at the dorm, 
Felicity comes out of the elevator into the lobby and Elena is there already waiting for her. She looks really anxious, like tapping her foot, waiting for Felicity. She goes right up to her. It's like, let's go get some ice cream. Or how about some hot chocolate? Let's get something sweet. Felicity's like, well, Julie's open mic thing is now. And Elena says, great, let's go there. And Felicity's like, you're acting really weird. Like, let me change. (laughs) But it's because she's trying to protect Felicity from the scene that unfolds where Hannah and Noel step out of his room as they're leaving to go somewhere. Felicity's stunned. She just walks right by both of them and says to Noel, can I talk to you for a minute? (laughs) They walk back into her room. And I don't know if you all noticed, but he's in his big boy trench coat again. I'm glad you said something because I was definitely going to say something. Mm -hmm. Whenever he's acting mature or not like a sophomore in college, he puts on his trench coat. That's his, that's mature Noel. Yeah. Yeah. And even the rest of the episode, I noticed he had different coats on. Like this one, he very Mm -hmm. specifically has his trench back on. Yeah. Like Todd Mulcahy Noel never would have worn a trench coat. Nope. (laughs) Like. It's true. Like finals Noel never would have worn a trench coat. It's Mm -hmm. like he was so obsessed with Felicity and like a doofus for all these past episodes. And now all of a sudden he's serious and trench coaty again. Mm Mm-hmm. So they go to Felicity's room, and she's like, just going to come right out and ask, what's going on? And Noel says, Hannah came to see him. She needs help. Felicity's like, fine, just go. And Noel's like, ugh, I just don't know what to do. She's desperate. Or like, hell yeah, she's desperate. She's desperate to get in your pants. Like, she, it's not about the music, right? Yeah. So Felicity says... <laughs> This is the best line, I think, of the whole episode. She says, if you're going to defend her or your decision, I might throw up. And it's just, like, the (laughs) best line. She delivers it so perfectly. And she tells him, like, this isn't about her music or writer's block. It's about you. And 100% accurate. He says, well, if you don't want me to go, just say that. She's like, well, I'm not going to tell you what to do. So then he says, you make it seem so easy. You don't just stop feeling things for someone just because you start feeling them for someone else. And Felicity says, well, obviously, yeah, it was a deep relationship, deeper than I could possibly understand because we never slept together. And thank God I didn't give that part of myself to someone who was so unsure about me. And that's where I kind of say like, oh, Felicity, I don't know about that. Like, her bra- he never said anything that it's like, well, we never slept yet. Like, she brought the sex part into it, which I thought was a little weird. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys have thoughts She there. had been insecure. She had been insecure about that before. Like, I have to get it over with kind of thing and be like the rest of the human race type of thing. And the vibes that they put on when Hannah bring does bring out something in him. And not just the trench coat, but like a different kind of like he acts more grown up. Like, he acts a little bit more mature and like less of a doofus and less shaking eight ball kind of stuff. So I could see how she might equate like sex and maturity and like their history and stuff. So it is a little bit of a leap, but I think, yeah, it's just a reflection of her own insecurity about where she stands with them. And I was just, yeah, I was thinking back to the Give Me a No episode when you were saying that Noel was throwing some of that in her face. This almost to me felt like Felicity was throwing that in his face. Like, oh, well, thank God I never had sex with you if you're so unsure about me. See, I thought I don't think she was thrown in his face. Mm. I think she genuinely is insecure. I don't think she was trying to hurt him as much as she was feeling hurt. Mm. Like, I don't think she was being snotty about it. So then Noel says that he thought it was over and maybe it is, but he doesn't know. And that's the honest truth. So then Felicity asks, oh, my God, are you breaking up with me? (laughs) And Noel says that he knows that he can't ask her to wait for him while he's with Hannah. And then he says, like, wait for me to make up my mind. And I don't know there. Was he just repeating what he said he can't ask her? It it almost made it sound like, I can't ask you to do this, but I'm asking you to wait for me. So, yeah, that that sentence there, I was like, is he just repeating the first thing he said? Like, I know I can't ask you to wait for me while I'm with her. I think he was correcting his words. Correcting, okay. Yeah. yeah, because he said, well, I'm with Hannah, like, as if they're still mm. dating, like, it's rewind back to November or something. Like, I can't ask you to wait for me while I'm still with Hannah. And I think he, like, realized what he said and was wait like, for me to make well, I'm still mind. trying to make up my mind about gotcha. Hannah because he caught what he said. Like, it's as if they already are together right. and Felicity's already on the sideline and has to, you know, wait. Which she then says, well, you kind of already made up your mind. If I hadn't caught mm-hmm. you, you'd already be gone with her. 
So she asks him to leave and he says he's sorry and leaves. So she kind of peeks out the door after him and watches Noel and Hannah leave together. I want to rewind a little bit here. I think Elena was a little bit out of character by trying to do this whole distraction thing. Because why didn't she have a pair of boxing gloves on already or have a pair of boxing gloves to hand to Felicity and be like, yo, let's stomp this bitch out or stomp Noel out or stomp somebody because she I'm not I'm not promoting violence. And I don't think (laughs) Elena is inherently violent, but we've seen her knock a mofo out before. I'm just saying I can't believe she wasn't like, yo, your man's with somebody else. Like, I told you to keep an eye on him, but I got my eyes on him. And this is what I've seen so far. Like, I can't believe she didn't have more yeah. intense energy around that instead of just, let's just get out of here real quick. Like, yeah. that, that was an interesting That's... way to react. Especially where, like, Felicity was the one who saw Blair and, like, they had that whole episode about them dealing with that. So you'd think Elena would be like, yeah. Guess the tables what? have turned. Come on, let's get together. Let's get these mofos. And Elena and Noel. <laughs> Hold them accountable. And Elena and Noel are friends. And she's put him mm-hmm. in his place before, like in the Give Me an O episode, where she's yeah. like, you're wallowing. That's mm-hmm. not a good look, right? You'd think Elena would also be like, Noel, what are you doing? <laughs> a little bit more assertive or confrontational. Yeah. Not Again, not aggressive confrontational, but a little bit like just, direct. yo, what's up? Yeah. yeah. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, direct. You like Felicity. <laughs> And then, yeah, to protect him now for him to leave with Hannah and not tell Felicity that is out of character. I think the writers, there's a lot of out of character stuff happening in my opinion. But yeah, that's that's a good point. So yeah, and then my last thought after this back and forth with them, he says he can't wait for her or he can't ask her to wait. She asks, like, are you breaking up with, he, up with me? He doesn't say, like, yeah, we're broken up. He's just like, well, I can't ask you to wait. And then she tells him to leave. I'm not in this relationship, but I feel confused. Is it a break? Are they broken up? Is she going to wait? Like, I, I think they just both kind of messed up here in getting clarity of what are you now, especially for the two people who are, like, obsessed with definitions. To me, this was just a little murky, the way they left the yeah. end of this conversation here. But it's mostly Noel's fault for still leaving When they didn't have that clarity, he should have stayed and been like, okay, let's talk about this a little longer. But he just walked out. Yeah, he Mm -hmm. fucked up. I think his actions were more clear than his words. Like, he he left. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's communicating in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then at the bar, Lynn introduces Julie on stage. And I feel bad here, though, for her because none of her friends are there yet. So she, like, gets up onto the stage I will say she does look so good in like her little tube top. She doesn't have the little butterfly clips in her hair. Like she looks like a really great, nice performer up there. So she starts playing and then Felicity shows up in the middle and then Ben shows up in the middle of the song. And Felicity also just kind of watches Ben watching Julie and Ben looks so happy and proud of Julie. I got a little emotional there um, Mm -hmm. because, yeah, he was supporting her and they clearly made up. So that was really cute. And so Felicity's kind of watching them. She probably feels, I don't know, just sad about everything with Noel and then seeing her other two friends have a really good, strong relationship that might be hard for her in that situation. Mm -hmm. So then back in her room, Felicity looks like she's getting ready to make her tape to Sally, but it looks like she doesn't really know what to say. And I actually think this is really clever because we haven't heard any narration of Felicity talking to Sally in the whole episode. So it's like she hasn't started recording a tape yet, which is why we haven't heard her narrate. I just thought that was a really very small detail, but it was really clever. Like she's not narrating this because we're kind of seeing it all in real time. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. So then there's a knock at the door and we think, is it Noel? Did he come back? Nope. It's Eli. So... Eli's there. He's like, oh, I had this stupid thought. I made some sketches, thought you might want to see them. And she's kind of flustered. And he says that he feels like he interrupted something. She's like, no, let me get my coat. So she grabs her coat and goes to the studio with Eli. So they're walking into the studio and he like apologizes. He's like, sorry, you know, I've only seen you a couple of times and I did it all from memory. The sketches are of Felicity. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Felicity says she's never had anyone draw her before. Has anyone drawn you, either of you? Have you ever been sketched? Yeah. My husband's an artist. Aww, that's so cute. <laughs> I mean, he hasn't sketched me because I would probably vomit if I saw myself sketched, but he's done lots of art, like digital art. He's done that for me. That's so cute. Um, I approve of that. That's, that's acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one's drawn me. I've only drawn myself for self-portraits. Never had the pleasure of having anyone draw me. And you've, you've drawn other models. 
Yeah. Yeah, Felicity says she's never had anyone draw her before. And Eli's like, well, it's dark and it's rainy. It's quiet here. <laughs> Why don't you let me draw you like one of my French girls? <laughs> <laughs> Something about the 90s. They really loved these like sketching mm-hmm. sex scenes. And yes. Felicity's like, oh, no, I'd be too self-conscious. And I'm like, see, Abby, she does know the word conscious. <laughs> So Eli says, well, there's only one other person here besides me to feel awkward in front of. Come on. But then we switch back to Hannah and Noel at Hannah's apartment. She's playing her fugue, and then she gets stuck at the end. She's supposed to be some brilliant composer, but, you know, oh, I'm stuck Uh at the coda. So Noel's listening in another chair and tells her that it's like Baby Teeth, that other piece you wrote last year. She wanted a tempo change, but he saved the day with a brilliant idea of going back to what she had at the beginning. Wow, he is a master. (laughs) <laughs> and again, writers, I see the metaphor. I see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, she's like, is that okay. what you think I should do? Go back to the intro? And sure enough, it is. So, yeah, I groundbreaking. She, I don't know about you guys, but when she said something like, you think it's derivative? I just wanted to punch her in the face. Of course, you would say something like, you think it's derivative? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> Shut up. I hate her so much. <laughs> yeah, now she's going to do the intro as the coda groundbreaking florals for spring groundbreaking so then we go back to the art studio where felicity does decide to sit for eli but she's a little awkward and she starts talking about when she was in art and was drawing models so there was this old woman she kept so still it was like she was dead and felicity got so obsessed with this model looking dead she was like waiting for her to blink or twitch or move and she like ended up not drawing because she was too obsessed watching this old lady model in the middle of her story, the other person in the studio leaves. So now they're all alone. And Eli asks, what happened to the lady, the dead model? And Felicity says, oh, well, she was just really good. So then Eli says, oh, I'll be right back. And we go back to Hannah's, where she's playing her piano as Noel watches more. And then we go back to the art studio. So we're seeing just like both of these situations progress. I thought it was really well done. Eli says, get comfy and... You know, she doesn't really know what to do. So he's like, oh, well, do you mind? And he comes to position her in the right pose. So it's getting very steamy. It's getting very close. And he pushes her hair to one side. He, like, gives her the smile. And Felicity says, oh, excuse me a minute. And she gets up and leaves. (laughs) But she goes to the payphone to call Noel's room. And he's still not there. So I don't know. I guess she was like, oh, if he came back to his room, then I won't go through with this. I don't I don't know what she was trying to do there, but. Yeah, I think she was just trying to check, like, uh, is he still with Hannah or is he home? Mm. Yeah, if he's not sitting around waiting for her, she's not going to sit around waiting for him. Literally, like, it's it's on like Donkey Kong. And this is where cell phones would come in handy. But, you know, (laughs) he's not home. Oh, well. But that shows, yeah, yeah, that shows where he's not. He's obviously still with her. I think that's, yeah, it's an assumption, but it's accurate. But I mean, either way, she can do whatever she wants, even if he did go home, you know. For sure. I think that just tells her, like, yeah, we can't salvage this. It's over. Yeah, like, oh, he's, he's still with he's her. He's with somebody yeah. else. Yeah. It's just that extra little nudge. Mm-hmm. She, I mean, nobody has to twist her arm <laughs> to be with Eli, <laughs> but that's just an extra little confirmation. Like, okay, let's do this. So then at Hannah's, where Noel still is, she's playing her piano and her hair kind of falls and Noel gets up and he goes to play with her hair too. And he kisses her on the head. She stops playing, turns around, they start kissing, and we get lightning and thunder at that moment. So there are some (laughs) stormy, stormy times ahead here. Back in the art studio, Felicity's back with Eli after her phone call. He's positioning her again around all these comfy pillows, making Mm -hmm. it nice for her. And meanwhile, Noel and Hannah are getting hot and heavy. And then Eli finally makes a move and kisses Felicity, starts undressing her, and she's into it. And then we go back to Hannah's apartment, and Noel all of a sudden says, we can't do this. And he pulls away. Hannah says, he can just stay. They don't have to do anything. And he says, no, he shouldn't be here. He's sorry. Then we go back to the art studio. Eli asks Felicity if she's okay. She's okay. And he asks her if she wants to stop. And she says, no. Da, da, da. <laughs> so they keep it going, and it's really hot because the gorgeous art studio. We got the rain trickling down mm-hmm. on the windows. The lighting's yeah. perfect. 
I mean, that's got to be one of the mm-hmm. sexiest like teen soap oh scenes my God. ever. Yeah. I wanted that to happen to me in college so bad. Of course, it, <laughs> you know, never did. But that was that was beautiful. I want to add here too. the way Eli was looking at Felicity was reminiscent of the way Ben was looking at Julie. Mm. Like that just intense like admiration and desire. Like I like he was looking at her that same way. And I loved it. He's got those fuck me eyes. Here for it. Mm-hmm. And the enthusiastic consent. Very hot. Like oh, yeah. Asking, are yeah. you yeah. okay? Yeah. Like, checking it. Are you okay? Do you want me to stop? Nope. Great. <laughs> we'll go, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the true. Consent That's good. Was, was amazing. Yeah. He, he really is. He's amazing. He's like the best character on this whole show. Yeah. We didn't get enough oh, of him. I wish. No. Yeah, Rob. Yeah. See, him and Elena, that would have been so awesome, man. Mm -hmm. I would have been fine with that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Just more of him in general would have been amazing. (laughs) I was going to say, I do remember being surprised watching this the first time that she she actually kept going with this. That just didn't seem part of her character. I know she had just gone through this upsetting situation with Anol and everything, but I was like, what? Felicity? No. This was the other part where it felt a little out of character. I'm all for it. Like, get it, girl. Do you? I don't blame you. It's Eli. He's hot. Get it. But Mm -hmm. especially her saying that to Noel this episode, too, about, like, I'm so glad I didn't give myself. Like, Mm. to me, like, in my opinion, she places a lot of emphasis on sex and thinks, you know, puts a lot of meaning behind it. And so for her to flip Mm -hmm. a switch this quickly and be like, Never mind. I'm going to just have this fling with an art student that I barely know. I just know Mm -hmm. his name, right? I thought it wasn't within character. But then I'm also like, well, she is also really impulsive. And maybe she was just really upset. And like, I just want to have fun. And this was just how she reacted. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it didn't totally seem in character. I didn't think it seemed as impulsive. I think she felt really seen by him in a way that she hadn't felt seen by Ben Ornall because like the way that Ben again was seeing Julie in her moment and I think that Eli was recognizing her gifts and like really celebrating that and that was you know the meaning behind that. I think she felt really seen and validated and appreciated and all those good feelings that she hadn't been feeling from Noel lately. Mm -hmm. Especially when she had first reawakened her art thing and he was like oh you're off doing this and that with this weirdo and it was it took him a while to get to the point where like oh i scanned it in so you can do digital stuff Mm. whatever like he his knee-jerk reaction was to reject it or to go around it and not see and hear her and eli was never that way he was always like yes Mm -hmm. use the studio be amazing you're great at this keep going Mm mm-hmm Yeah, I think getting to the point she had gotten to with Noel had taken so long and it was so difficult and there's like all these obstacles and then they finally got together and she had built this trust with him and then to have that trust like broken in a matter of two days. I don't blame her for seeking comfort or, you know, finding something with Eli when she wasn't getting it from Noel. Yeah, that common ground, I think, and both of them being interested in art, I think that's a connection that she hasn't had with. I mean, her and Elena both have the medicine route and stuff like that but that's her friendship but as far as like connecting with somebody on a deeper level i think that's the first time we've really seen that so yeah that's where we end on this i'm surprised this wasn't a to be continued episode to me this is a bigger cliffhanger than todd mulcahy i don't care about what happens to him and getting hit by a bus <laughs> this one's the bigger cliffhanger in my opinion <laughs> I'm very excited to watch the next episode. I actually don't remember too yeah. much about it. <laughs> really? Oh, it the yet. next one's good too. It's juicy. Okay. All right. Good. good. I, I, I know like Eli is in too. it a little bit. Yeah. 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 So. Well, our hay counter, I think, was about 12, which is low. But I also think it was harder for me to count this time because there were a lot more new people and like groups of people saying hi to each other and hey 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 like lots of people in the background too in the studio so i counted 12 that might be off if i'm wrong that's fine (laughs) (laughs) got the hay counter wrong it's 15 not 12 Um, i'm never watching this again (laughs) they counted the hay guys we're trying we're trying yeah there was a lot going on in this episode the hays were not the most important thing so yeah they were distracted. Yeah, Noel was confused and messed up bigly in this one. And and we don't yeah, get any feedback from Sally, right? Because she never produced mm. a tape to give to Sally. So we don't get any feedback from Not Sally. In this so one. We just, we're just left to our own devices, just like Felicity. We just have to figure this out. Oh, God. It's so confusing. What do we do? <laughs> Sally, we need you. I will say in the 
think it was the Gimme an O. At, yeah, at the end of Gimme an O when she tells Sally that she decided not to have sex. And I think that's when Sally tells her that her first time was with some random guy at a party. Oh, and yeah. When I when we were listening to that episode, I'm like, is that foreshadowing? Because Felicity, I know it's like not a completely random guy, but like it's someone she doesn't mm-hmm. really know that well. I was like, is that foreshadowing for Felicity's first time? So I just, yeah, I couldn't say it then. I didn't want to spoil it, but I was like, oh, I wonder if that was a little foreshadowing of how it's going to happen for Felicity too. So I think the writers had also maybe chosen a random-ish person because that way her first time wasn't with an Ornol Mm -hmm. and you couldn't, they wouldn't ever be able to be like, oh, I was her first. So it wouldn't impact their love triangle thing. Like it had to be somebody else or it would have been too heavy yeah. going forward for their love triangle i think well it, none of us expected it it was it was a surprise so i thought that was at least interesting because we were probably all like yeah, who's totally. it gonna be no or ben no or ben and it's like no it's gonna be this hot art student cool <laughs> <laughs> it's eli <laughs> so i guess we should start like team eli shirts because i was just awesome. thinking that <laughs> yes. yeah. with his necklace on it buttons and stickers mm-hmm. We should try and get Simon Rex on the pod. Absolutely. Just drool I'm the sure. whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, hey, I want to get Simon Rex on me. Sorry. <laughs> Damn it. Now he's never going to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. On that note. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Fugue with us. As we mentioned, it's to be continued. But first, we are taking a short break on episode discussions. Instead, we're going to be hosting our first March Madness competition. Up next is a bonus episode where we will select our sweet 16 episodes of season one to complete our March Madness bracket. Then we want to hear from you. After we select the sweet 16, head on over to our Instagram at Felicity Was Here Pod to vote for your favorite episodes of season one in each round. And in the end, we'll crown one episode as our season one winner. We can't wait to see which episode is your favorite. Talk to you all next week. Bye. 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 Felicity Was Here is produced, written, and edited by Heather, Melissa, and Dr. Joe. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Felicity Was Here Pod. If you're enjoying the pod, please leave us a review and help us spread the word. We appreciate you and would love to hear from Felicity super fans like us. So send us your feedback, ask us your burning questions, or just say hey at felicitywasherepod at gmail.com. We may even read your note in a future episode. Talk to you all next week.